Less mass, though. It'll be interesting. All right. Once it is starved of fuel, the core will shrink and grow hotter as the outer surface expands. Okay, so here's our sun. All right, this is what happens. So once the fuel is used up, it will transform the sun into a red giant. It will shrink and grow hotter as the outer surface expands, and then eventually it will grow. It will kind of blossom up to a red giant. After about a billion years, the red giant's core will be hot enough to begin fusing helium. Okay, so now it's warmer, uh, red, and it's going to fuse helium. Okay, and then it will transform itself into a pulsating yellow giant, as you can see. All right. As the core helium fuels begins to expire, because you've got helium, because remember with the hydrogen reacts with the hydrogen to form helium. But now the helium is reacting, so that's, that's the first stage. That's the stage we're in right now. But then when you are in the yellow giant stage, you'll have the helium reacting with helium to make other things. Once you run out of helium, the sun will transform itself well, into another red giant, but a bigger one. It'll be a super big red giant, if you will, okay? Then it'll be very luminous. So the luminosity of the red giant will drive the sun's atmosphere into space, leaving behind its bare core. So eventually there's, it's, it's not holding on very well, and boom, it just shoots out. But then the core will eventually cool, and you'll turn itself into a white dwarf. It'll be one one-hundredth of the size of our sun now. So it's going to go, grow, sink, shink, grow, Shrink, grow, shrink, and then really, really shrink. So that's the lifetime of our star. Okay. Now, um, let's now talk about a high mass star. So what if I have a star that is ten times the size of our sun? So ten solar masses. Tim, hello, pencil. What's you doing here? Ten masses of the sun, we would say, or greater, twelve or fifteen or something like that. The ma this is, follows the same pattern as our previous star. It, you've got an interstellar cloud. It collapses, but there's just more stuff here. There's more atoms uh, there, and when it does this, it also makes a protostar. And then eventually it turns into a star. But in this case, it's not a, a small star or a less massive star. It's a very massive star. So it's, it, and also, because there's more stuff, it proceeds through these stages much faster than our sun. So this is going to happen much, much, rapid, more, much, much more rapidly. <laughs> very quickly! Okay, they happen very fast. Very fast. Okay. <laughs> okay, very sun. So now here's where things get weird and different. The high mass star then passes through the pulsating yellow stage. Just skips that red stage, isn't it? Okay, before it turns into a red giant. So it does a little different pattern. And so as it does this different pattern, um, these, of course, still have a lot more mass. And it's going to happen more rapidly because if you have more stuff, it's going to be at a higher temperature. And if it's at a higher temperature, there's more stuff that's going to burn. It's actually doing the nuclear fusion thing. It's not technically burning like when you're burning a piece of paper in the room. It's kind of a different ballgame. But, um, yeah, just because it is. So in the red giant phase, the core begins to fuse one element to another, creating elements as massive as iron. So it gets up to um, the element iron. Okay. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Once iron is reached in the core of the red giant. It's out of fuel, and it collapses. But then the star's heavy elements are blown into space along with the outer layers. So as it collapses, it explodes. And it forms, well, what everybody loves to talk about, the supernova. The supernova! <coughs> and then what's left over at the end is one of two things, either a neutron star or a black hole. Now, yeah, and black holes, we'll talk about these kinds of things and what a neutron star is and a black hole later on, but that's just kind of the lifetime. Now, the last thing in this particular podcast is what causes everything to happen. And the answer, of course, is gravity. So gravity drives stellar evolution from the star's formation to its death. So it's all about gravity. The collapsing cloud will heat because of gravity, so that's what causes it to heat up. This main sequence star will sustain itself as gravity compresses the heat core to fusion temperatures to get hot enough to, to fuse. And it will sculpt the final collapse of the star into a white dwarf, a neutron star, or a black hole. These are the three end results of stars. White dwarfs, that's like our sun. This is for the low mass stars. And for the high mass stars, it's either a neutron star or a black hole. Okay. 
So it's all about how much matter, mass, gravity, um, there is. And it will actually determine how long the sun, the star, whatever, will live. Is It's the amount of mass. T typically, the heavier ones, they live shorter lives. The lighter ones, less massive, we would say, actually, they live um, longer lives. And we happen, of course, have a sun near our planet that has uh, a relatively low mass. And so um, it will last much, much longer. And that's probably good, I guess. We don't want our star blowing up or anything. And our star will never blow up. It will do these other things. Well, that concludes today's podcast. This kind of gives you a brief overview of the history of the different stars and uh, types of stars. The big mass and high mass stars, 10 solar mass units or greater, or less than 10 is the low mass star. And it follows a particular sequence. All right, let's... Uh